Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Vowels and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 171, we're going to talk about what gain is. Now, I know this is going to be a very boring topic, so we're going to have some pretty pictures on one of our bench scopes to look at to help explain things. And we're going to, at the end of the show, we're going to have three discounted quads of our favorite power tubes, all the EO34s. Yep, we spent all of yesterday testing them, didn't even have time to post this video. Yeah, I think we finished sometime around 2 o'clock, hadn't had lunch, finished lunch, and at 3 o'clock, Charles said, <laughs> We're doing it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we're no good filming later in the afternoon. It has to be in the morning. Oh, it doesn't happen all the time, but it happened yesterday. Okay, but first, caution everyone. Electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Last week we jumped into showing you how to change the gain of your amp simply by selecting a different tube. And we did all of that without ever once explaining what in the heck gain is. So we're going to fix that today. An easy way to understand gain is to think about your volume control. When you turn it clockwise, the music gets louder. That's an increase in gain that you're hearing amplified. Okay, so I made a quick little sketch of a triode. I'm not going to spend too much time explaining all aspects of it, but we're, I'm just going to show you what Charles is going to be shifting, and he'll explain to you what's happening. Mm -hmm. So here's your grid, here's your plate, here's your cathode, right? So there's three electrodes in a simple, the simplest form of a tube, and we call those a triode, a trio. There's a plate resistor up here on the high voltage side and there's a cathode resistor down here on the bottom of the tube and that leads off to a ground connection. Your signal will come in onto the grid and it'll head off here. And that's a coupling capacitor. We're not going to fuss about the details. What Charles is going to show you is what happens when we change the value of the plate resistor or the value of the cathode resistor. Okay, let's get that cute drawing out of the road. Yeah. So one thing to remember whenever you're changing a plate resistor, and we were going to show a load line on here, but we felt it was going to bog things down a little bit, is that it will adjust the amount of total swing available for the tube, and it adjusts how much the plate voltage varies based off the signal. So the higher the resistance on the plate in general, the more your plate voltage is going to swing with the signal changes. And the more gain you get. And the more gain you get. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you want as high of a plate resistor as possible. There's all sorts of variables that come into play here that usually end up with your tube not running at whatever the rated gain is. That You almost never get it. Okay, so you've got a, you've got a low plate resistor in now, and you've got a very low-looking sine wave. Yeah. So and what are we feeding into the preamp? So we're sending one volt RMS, which is 2.828 volts peak to peak into the amplifier. I don't confuse anybody. Let's stay with, <laughs> let's stay with RMS. Let's stay with right? RMS. So we're sending one volt in and we're getting seven and a half volts out approximately. And this is using the 6N1P gain tube, which has a nominal gain of, I believe, 33 or 34. So potentially this should be able to turn one volt RMS into 33 or 34 volts RMS. And clearly we're not getting anywhere close to that right now. And do we ever always get the maximum? No, not no. in my experience. <laughs> no, I think the closest you can get is maybe 80% of the rated maximum, something yeah. like that, without going into the weeds, as they say, electrically. So what is that sine wave you're showing? Is that one kilohertz? This is a one kilohertz sine wave, and it's coming right off the output of the amplifier from the cathode follower here, which isn't doing anything to the signal at all. So that's right sort of in the middle of the audio frequency band. Yeah. Okay. All right, so first thing we're going to do here is actually adjust the cathode, and that's going to adjust the idle point of where the tube is sitting and the amount of swing that's available to it. And let's watch what happens over here to the volts RMS as I, as I bring this value down. Now, as I'm bringing it down, it's bringing it 
into a nicer operating point. So you've got a lower resistor value. Lower resistor value. And you can see we jumped immediately from seven up to almost 16.8. Sorry, it's gonna be a little hard to see that on screen here. The contrast is really... Oops. Yeah, but they can see the sine wave getting larger, so... right. And there's an even lower value. And we're up all the way at 20.45. Woohoo, let's go home. Okay, now we can actually make it even better. We've got a low plate resistor right now. This is the lowest option on here. And we're gonna turn it up. So again, that is making our sine wave less steep. It's gradually pushing it down and giving us more plate voltage change for grid voltage. Aha, 20, and we're up to almost 23. And the last one here, we've gone all the way up to about 26.7. And the keen eye among you are going to notice that we've got a little bit of distortion in our sine wave now. You can see how the bottom end here is rounding off while we have a normal sign at the top. And this is telling us that we're way down in the weeds in terms of where this tube likes to operate. This is distortion. Probably a lot of second harmonic distortion. So this tube is gonna sound very muddy, very warm right now. But it's only distortion on one side of the swing, right? The right. positive side of the swing. Is in a nice operating area. Yeah. But we have, this tube is basically operating nowhere near where you want it to right now, but it's a good example of how much the plate and the cathode resistors can affect what your gain is. Okay, why don't you set it back to its normal operating point? Do you remember? We have a, we actually have a master sheet so that yeah, Charles so can set up. How many tubes did you figure you can test in this? Oh, your pre I think we're up to at least 20 or so. Yeah. So this is the ideal operating point right here for getting the cleanest signal out of the 6N1P. And you can see we're actually only getting a little bit under 17. Which but it's a nice, clean, linear area of the tube to operate. Exactly, yeah. And now, that, this is for audio. If we were, if we were designing a guitar amp, we you might want some of that distortion. We probably there. want to really push the tube hard. And that's actually what some tone controls and some uh, distortion controls do is affect these values right here to push the tube in the nonlinear areas or to increase or decrease the gain. Well, that was really fun, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can see even here, this you, is, we're only getting about half the gain of what the tube's capable of, and this is where we want it. Do you think when you do the edit, can you put some lightning bolts and stuff like that? <laughs> I don't know about that. That might be a little too goofy. We might we'll get see. some more viewers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thanks for doing that, Charles. Hopefully that helps to explain gain a little bit. The, so visually, as your sign got bigger, that was an increase in gain. Yep. Okay. Well, well done. Okay. Um, so I think we're going to do a, a little break. We're going to reload the, the desk and get some, some tubes out so that you can take a look at what we've got uh, discounted. And we won't subject you to us taking things apart and almost dropping everything. Okay, we'll be back in a second. Okay, okay. we're back. That was quick. <laughs> we didn't drop anything. Okay, okay so you've got a, a couple of quads here. We've got one quad of discounted mullards that are new old stock. That's these guys right here. And yeah, they've got different labels on them, but new, what is the new old stock center testing value? It's 60 uh, million. 60. So these are actually testing above new old stock for these tubes. And what's the reason why we're discounting them? Because these are the less common double O getters. Let me see if I can get that on the camera here. There's a lot of flashing. These have two rings on the top and that is just very uncommon for these tubes they're harder to find they're harder to match let me get that in focus yeah and some sellers uh charge a premium for them which i've never understood um but we tend to focus on the single getter simply because it costs so much money to keep a large inventory of expensive tubes in stock and um uh, so we're, we're basically going to try and, and not carry any double O getters. So th they're going to go out the door at half the new old stock price. Yeah. Which and it's, ex it's a, an expensive price. Um, but these tubes cost a fortune. And, um, and the good thing about um, uh, any of the discount uh, quads is that it, you can go ahead and use a cheers code on top of the discount price. Yep. Yep. So, so uh, this is the deal of the century here. No. New old stock Mullard XF2s 
that are testing above new old stock at a discounted price. How often do you see that? Well, they're, we're selling them for essentially what the used price is. Yeah. Right? And you've got two quads of RFTs. Yes, and these ones we're discounting uh, even though they're testing around new old stock as well, just because they have some minor cosmetic issues. This is a good example right here. Sorry, the lighting in here isn't perfect right now. Um, but you can see the base is just a little mottled up. For some reason, some uh, tube hounds and sellers um, aggressively clean these things. I, oh. Yeah, we only ever see that with the RFTs. Uh, so it must be a Eastern European thing. Yeah, maybe. Uh, and they, you know, they they leave them in such a, a way that they can't be shiny anymore. They always have that sort of dull, mottled look to them, and they're not all like that. But this is a nice match quad, and even though some of them probably don't deserve to be in a discount set. We're put it, we put it together for you anyway. Yeah, and what about the testing numbers? Are they are they still nice and tight? Oh yeah, well, new old stock is around 60, and you can see these are all testing 54 up to 56 here. So they're right around the new old stock area. Right, and we've just recently changed our, our, our testing point. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we, for years and years, we used to follow the, um, the very common maxi matcher power tube tester um, testing numbers operating point yeah and the reason we did that was so that we could compare tubes that came in from other suppliers and that people would sort of have a reference bench the problem is maxi matcher didn't set up good operating points they're not terrible well, they essentially took the operating point for running the tube in class a B and put it in their tester and that's not optimal for running these tubes in a test you have to treat them as an individual tube in the circuit yeah so and so that's what we've done with ours now uh it means the numbers are are a bit different but they're much more realistic to the actual use case you know, basically we got a higher resolution yeah exactly so yeah. Anyways, um, and you've got a couple of quads of RFTs that you found. So, excellent. So, they're all in the store and they're ready to go. And feel free to use some discount codes. Always happy to see you using them. Yep. And remember, we can reach almost everybody with flat rate shipping of $20. And if the order's $150 or more, and if you buy one of these quads, it will be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we're laughing. But, you know, high quality power tubes, vintage power tubes, they just cost a fortune. It's just the way it is. Um, we can reach you for free if yours is $150 or more. And there's a hidden code that somebody just snagged just a couple of days ago. And there is a code if you spend huge money that only two people have ever guessed and only one has ever used. It costs us a fortune. Uh, and I'm going to give you a hint. If you buy any of the discount quads, you won't hit that price point. Anyways, this is Jim. And Charles. Signing off. Stay safe, everyone. Cheers.